Our next speaker, Srijata Bhatnagar, who will be speaking on how to break the biases as a leader and so. With the power and techniques of her setback leadership and SOAR models, she works with business leaders, especially corporate women, and uh, to convert their setbacks into opportunities for professional and personal growth. Srijatha trains them to develop a resilient mindset for life and equip them with the tools that can assist them along the way. Now, you've all got a book, right? So we all have to thank Srijatha for that book. Can we say thank you, Srijatha? So in her new book, you will discover the ideas and let's see, we can see how best we can apply them to our lives. And when we face setbacks, a lot of us are negative, but you know what Srijatha's slogan is? Setbacks are awesome. So in this speech, Srijatha will take us through ways to break biases as a leader and so. Please welcome onto the stage, Srijatha Bhatnagar. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Maisha. Thank you so much. How are you all doing? Woohoo! I want to hear some noise from the back. I was sitting there and I was seeing them all calmly sitting. No questions asked. And most of them were on the phone. So, hi! <laughs> superb, superb. Thank you. I feel grateful to be here. So, I'm going to start my speech with a story. And the story is about this girl who was a very, very ambitious girl. The story goes back in 2009. She chose to take a six months long break from her career to bring in the best project of her life, a baby. Now she, though she was a very, very ambitious woman, she never believed that a motherhood can really change her life, change her career trajectory, make her stop in her growth. But that was probably not to be. So she went while she was pregnant, even though she did not believe that she, her motherhood could actually stop her from growing. And because of that, while sitting in the hospital room to go under the scissors, she decided to take work calls and make sure that her team was comfortable while she was away. Now, after she got this baby delivered in her hand, she was going through a lot of stress. How many mothers here? Do you recognize your first six months of having the baby, trying to figure out, you feel like you, have, you need to have 10 hands, 10 heads? Yes, to take care of the baby. So she was feeling like that. Even in that situation, she made sure that she was contributing to her workplace because she loved her work. The work was her workplace. And within like three, four months, she was getting really restless to get back to work. And after six months, it was her time to go back to work. Do you think how she would feel like? She was feeling exactly like this. Yay, I'm back to my workplace. And I am right now going to do all that I have learned in the last six months from the project baby. Because a baby teaches you how to be a great manager, a diplomat, a leader, and many more. Right? When she got to her workplace, Though her colleagues welcomed her with a lot of gusto, with a lot of happiness, she felt something was wrong. Something that she couldn't quite point out. She was feeling, I have worked in this organization for four years plus before I came back from my maternity leave. Still, there's something wrong. There's something that's bothering. What was that? She didn't know. So by the time she was there, it was about a month later, the, appraise, the appraisals were supposed to be announced. Who's afraid of appraisals here? No? Wow, you all have amazing workplaces, I must tell you. But this woman was not, not like that. She was all anxious and you know, worried about what would be my appraisal. So the appraisal letters came, and she opened it. 
and she read it. The letter read, Hi, Shrijata, we would like to inform you that you have been moved into being an individual contributor from being a manager, and your team has been assigned to Miss X, another manager. What do you think she would have felt like? When she went to her boss and asked, why, what happened? Why did you do this? Did I not perform? I did perform, right? I was one of the star performers. So she said, no, we thought that now that you're a mother, you probably need less demanding role. Really? Really? So that was her story. And that woman was me. Not the photo, <laughs> but the story is mine. Right? Now fast forward to 2022. Recently I was talking to a young ambitious woman. It was her first job. And she was into the workplace for just two months. She was there for just two months. Interestingly, her seniors found it amusing to, to treat her like a punching bag and a bullying toy. They started telling her to do odd jobs like, for example, bring us the tea, bring us the coffee, can you bring us this, can you bring us that? And started mentally torturing her by indirectly talking about her family, her upbringing, and so on and so forth. And when she retorted, they poured liquid nitrogen on her feet, causing her burn, cold burn, and frostbite. And if this was not enough, they went across to the MD and complained against her, saying that she's not worthy to work in this organization. She's a threat to the organization. And MD retorted to that. And he went ahead and threatened her for losing her job. Horrible, right? So they were all blaming her for no mistakes of her. Now, 13 years apart, two different stories, two different companies, two different women, and two different career phases of life. But both of them had some similarity. Can any of you tell me, especially from the people from the back rows, what would be the similarity? You get 30 seconds to answer. Stereotype? Being a woman. Any other answers? Jealousy? OK, interesting. So both these women were the victim of what we call biases, stereotypes, and glass ceiling. So today, we are going to talk about what happened to these women. But I want to ask you before that, do you think these were just isolated stories? No? So let's see if, if it is really true. I want to know how many of you could relate to these, any of these two stories, either my story or the other one. If you do, can I ask you to stand up, please? Stand up and make some noise. We need to make noise in the world to make sure that, yes, we are there. And if you have faced any kind of bias, any kind of stereotypes, or any kind of glass ceiling in your life, I want you to stand up as well. And the third one, whom I want you to stand up, if you have heard that any of your friends or any of your colleagues or your loved one have faced any biases, any stereotypes, or any glass ceiling, please stand up and give me a yes. Yes. We have all faced biases, stereotypes, and glass ceiling. It is not only for women. So unfortunately, what happened for me, as well as this girl, we didn't know what we were facing. Please sit down. Thank you so much. Can we have a cheer for you, all of you? Can we have a round of applause for all of you, please? Thank you. Superb. So very interestingly, neither of these women knew that what they were going through. Like, think about me. I was thinking something was going wrong, but I didn't know what was going wrong. And I didn't know how to solve it either. So, what I did, I tried to solve the problem by going to my management and asking them, can you not do this to me? Can you stop doing this rebelling and all of that? 
but it all fell in the deaf ear. Nobody listened. So I quit. So the company lost a motivated, rearing to go, productive employee, and I lost my dream job. For the other girl in the story, her name is Anita, by the way. Of course, it's not her real name. She was terrified of losing her first job. She was worried of her career going down the drains. And therefore, what she chose to do was selling her soul. She killed her soul to stay there in the company so that she can just earn mere six months of experience. So let's talk about today, because we have such issues in the organization, how can we really break these biases? And not only for women, but for all of us, but for all of you, because I'm sure all of you have been through some kind of bias, some kind of stereotypes, some kind of glass ceilings in your own careers. So I run a particular uh, you know, podcast called Setback Leadership Podcast, and that specifically talks about this particular issue. The first season of the podcast actually had a lot of guests. One, of, uh, one among them were Afif in that uh, guest list. And uh, after talking to many of them, and after while writing my book, I realized there are three different pillars of breaking the bias, if you have to truly do it, and truly do it effectively for everyone. And the first one is, us women. Yes, yes we, we have to be the one that we have to do it. Like, as I said, in my story, I never knew what it was. I was trying to change the whole world. I was, change, I was trying to change my boss's mind. I was changing, trying to change the management's mind. But was I really thinking about changing my own mind? No, not at all. I was sitting and thinking, oh my God, I'm the victim, I, I went this, I did this, and blah, 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 I lost my job, what will I do now, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah. And none of this was working. Then, thanks to my counselor, she said, lady, you must look into yourself. Yes, I, me, myself. If I don't change myself, I can't change anybody. So therefore, what I did is I started picking up a couple of tools. Today I'm going to share two of those tools. There are many in my book as well. Two of those tools, one being journaling. How many of you maintain journaling? Please give yourself a pat on your back. You're already on the way of transformation, right? And the rest of you, let me tell you, I met one lady in my podcast called Sangeeta Roy Chaudhary. She's from India and she is a sales leader. She's a veteran sales leader. She is a poet. She's published her poetry book. She is a beauty queen. She uh, also runs a show, talk show, and she's currently trying her hand in entrepreneurship. So according to her, she maintains two journals. The first one is a normal journal, which we most, some of us do it, right? You know, writing down what are, what are we grateful for, what are the achievements that we like, what are the great things that we did today, what are the appreciative things we did today, and so on and so forth. But the second journal was the most important one. And that is a lie journal. She called it a lie journal, my friends. She said, at the end of the day, I write down all the lies I have been telling myself. What are the lies we are telling ourselves? I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm not strong enough. I can't speak good English. I don't have the background. I have taken a break. Now can I really come back? Can I do a good job? And so on and so forth. So she would write down all those lies and then strike them out. Something like this. What is the lie that you are telling yourself right now? Can you take a cue from Sangeeta's journal and start striking those lies out? The second one, okay, before that, please scan this. There is a gift for you inside the book as well as here. There is a toolkit that I have created. And in that, there are two different kinds of journals that you, are par that you get. And you can start creating your own journal through that. So go ahead, scan it, download it. Error. Error. Yeah. Really? Oh my god, I'll share the link in the mail separately. Did you find it? Okay, for her it's working. Interesting. Okay, so 
some who's who, for whom it is working okay iphone has a problem is it i for iphone it is working oh my god android guys have some work to do i guess <laughs> right so, <laughs> okay so for whoever whoever for uh, it is working for please share it with others will you do the sharing sharing is caring yes super now the next tool this is my favorite tool i call it reframing so whenever i'm going through a challenge i reframe the situation completely how do i do it yesterday my slides completely switched off they were not working they were refusing to open in any computer whatsoever we tried since morning till evening it didn't work in the night after i went back after first day i brought myself into my super productive zone took complete zone out completely zoned out and within one and a half hours i pulled this entire thing up now that is what i do with every setback whenever something comes up to me some challenges are thrown on to me instead of saying why me i said wow it's me i am the blessed child of the universe and the universe wants to teach me a lesson through this ask any of my friends kripa didn't i tell you this yes so that's that's what it is it is how that's how it is so when you reframe you change the situation completely for yourself now the second pillar is the leaders how many leaders in the room all of you are leaders isn't it yeah. raise your hands guys you even if you're not a manager you're a leader yeah. yes yeah so leaders have a work to do let me share a story quick story here about a leader who is wanting to hire a woman in his team i work with a lot of leaders and uh, he 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 came back to me and he said listen shujata i want to hire this woman i i really like her she is uh, she is really uh, you know perfect for this role etc but i have a problem she can't move from bangalore to hyderabad there's a unwritten rule in the corporate world that you need to be stationed in that you know in that city for you to be able to work so that was his first problem but he really liked her second problem was her salary was lesser how so he went up to the recruiter and found out that even though she's got equal amount of experience she was earning almost 40% lesser than her contemporaries in the new company so he was in a dilemma what to do and on the other hand she had only asked for 20% rise so there was a multiple levels of biases going on can you can you realize that so i sat down with the leader we brainstormed we worked on it and then we i i said why not do this why not you offer her a 50% hike in her current salary he's like can i really do that i said who's stopping you you're paying from the company's money isn't it not from your own pocket so then he went ahead and did this by that process what he did is he became a better leader by breaking the status quo twice firstly hiring a woman remotely secondly giving her a 50% hike even though she had an ask for it secondly he helped her break her internal biases that i am not good enough i can only deserve this much that's how leaders can help you break glass ceilings all of you can help your subordinates your folks breaking the glass ceiling the third one is organizations many of you sitting here are ceos the senior managers and the cxos of your current companies you have a big task to do so there is a there is an interesting thing uh, okay it's not working one minute okay looks like that particular slide is not there what i wanted to talk to you about is a interesting thing that indian railways did did recently what they did is they came up with something called a baby birth have you seen trains trains have normal births right like this so they added an extra piece of birth let's say this is the birth this is the wall and they added a extra piece of birth on the other side of the birth which can be closed and kept it and that they called a baby birth It's an amazing idea, right? Mothers get enough space, little more space to put their babies to sleep. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Can I get a bit more? Yes. 
Now I am losing my energy. <laughs> no. So, yeah, so it's a brilliant idea, but there was a problem in the execution. Can anyone point it out? So the birth is like this. There is a wall this side, and the baby birth is the other side. Any, any, anyone who can suggest what could be the problem? Same side? Okay. No? Okay. So the problem is, let's say the train is like this, the birth is like this, the other side there's a birth, and this side is the wall. You ask any mother, generally they put their small babies on the wall side of the birth. And this baby birth was on the open side of the birth. Will any mother use it? No. So what went wrong? The idea was nice, but the execution sucked. Nobody would use it, they got bad publicity. What went wrong, they didn't really listen to the end users and the person who might give them the expert comment on the execution. So it's important as leaders, as organizations, we must be listening. And how do we listen? Let's talk about that. This I will talk about a little later. There is, an, there is a way you can listen to even your line managers, even the lowest cadre of your companies. Here is what you need to do. In any meetings, town halls, you have town halls? In the town halls, can you make sure, instead of having the meeting open by your CEO, CFOs, and the senior folks, open the meeting by the lowest of the lowest people. And make sure you first ask them to share their opinion before you actually bring up the senior leaders. Because the moment there is a senior leader on stage, the rest of them, because they're thinking, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. He is sitting right there or she is sitting right there. How can I talk in front of them? So there's a zip. So you have to make the otherwise powerless people feel powerful. Then only you get amazing ideas. That's the first thing that, as organizations, you must do. And the second thing is, we all know this, don't we? That we need to have gender neutral KPIs and JDs in the world. But what's interesting is that, I was reading a book called Invisible Woman. And in that, she says, the, the author says, that uh, simple of the simple words, strong, can make a very huge impact in a male and a female resume. When the word strong is shared in the male resume, it is seen as capable, you know, uh, go-getter, driven leader. The same word, when it is written in a women's resume, guess what's the perceived value? Aggressive, yes, that's right. Aggressive, bully, uh, difficult to work with, and what not. So how do you really Remove this bias. Talk about perceived value of words right here. So let's do this. How about we remove the name from the resume while screening it? While you're giving the people to screen the resumes, remove the name. That's one, one thing that you can do. So biases is gone partially. Second thing is have AI to address those biases. That helps. But make sure AI is not done by biased people either. So that's very, very important, right? Uh, so so I, let, me, let me ask you this. Why do you think this is critical? Why do you think we need to remove biases, stereotypes, and glass ceilings from our world? How does it help? Anybody wants to share their opinion? Mike? Can I have mic? Is it okay? Is anybody want to share their opinion? Why do you think this is critical? Okay, there's a hand that's gone up there. I think so that we can give equal opportunity for both gender. Mm -hmm. And we should do it. Mm -hmm. Because you are a woman, you should be given promotion, not because you are a man or you should be given. That's what I believe. Right. It depends on the work that you do and the effort you put into it, right. than being a female or male. Thank you. Right, perfect. Anybody wants to share their opinion from the back rows? I feel you guys are feeling left out. I feel for you, I was sitting there, I was also feeling left out. So, would you like to share anything? Anybody? 
There, no, yes, there is a hand in the last row. Uh, hi. So hi. I uh, did completely agree with you. And uh, again, my opinion is, yes, nobody beat male, beat female, beat anybody. Everybody is equal and everybody has uh, their own skills, their own talent to show. So nobody is less or more. And as the other person said, yes, each one should get an equal opportunity to prove themselves in whatever role, whatever position that they are going to be uh, responsible for. Rather than putting a bias straight away on the face or looking at the name or looking at the gender and then decide that the person is not suitable or not capable of performing the job. Thank Super, you. Super, thank you. May I know your name, please? Uh, myself, Neha. Hi, Neha. And can we have a big round of applause for Neha and her in the front? They stood up and they shared their opinion. We must appreciate it, like how we said, right, in our previous session. So, uh, according to me, why it is critical is, as leaders, when you're having bias, or when you're not working on your bias, or you're not aware of your bias, you're not only doing disservice to others, you're actually doing disservice to yourself. Because you are stopping yourself from growing further and actually tapping into your rest of the potential. How many of you would want to work in 50% capacity? None. Would you want to really tap into your 100% capacity? Yes, yes, yes. Can I have a loud yes, please? Yes. Yeah. yes. So if you want to really do that, it is important that we get rid of biases, stereotypes, and glass ceilings from our world, from our workplace to be specific. But before I conclude, I want to ask you, or rather I want to open, open it to the crowd. If you have any questions, if you clearly mentioned that we must ask, offer the audience to ask questions. So any questions, any thoughts you would like to share, I'm happy to take it on before we conclude. Yes, there is a hand right there. Can I have the mic, please? Give, give, I'll take. Who rest? Yeah. Ask us. We will see. I, I want to just ask whether the hundred percent is possible for anyone. What do you think, crowd? Is hundred percent possible? Yes. Is that the kind of confidence you want to give her? Come on, guys. Yes. It yes. It is absolutely possible. Yesterday, like uh, we had this uh, one. One of the sessions said. Like, 60% perfection is good enough. Like yes. I mean, trying to be. <laughs> that was my friend, Bharti. You are the one to be <laughs> blamed for it. You're I right. Six. I would rather go for like, uh, like 60% perfection is, perfection is good enough. Like trying to be 100% perfect is making it worse, is what I thought and believed. Please, 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 please give her a big round. I completely agree with her what she said that yes, 60% perfection is good enough. However, is 100% effort possible? Yes. You have my answer. <laughs> I, I kind of think it's, uh, um, Jacqueline here, it's not uh, like, I don't look at it as a percentage, but I think uh, all of us women here, sorry men. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter your mother, your grandmother, whatever, you're single, it doesn't matter. But to me, is just being authentic to yourself and being the best of your version you can be to your family, to your employees, to the people you work with and really giving your heart. And when you're putting your heart in anything you, you do, I believe, sorry, not 100%, 150% is possible because you do it with the heart and the passion. Thank you. <laughs> yes, can you have a big round of applause for her, please? That she's absolutely right. There's one more person there. Okay, okay, there has. Okay. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Guys, make sure the mic works. Women need to talk. <laughs> Oops. Ahmed, what's happening? Airplane. Airplane. <laughs> 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 
If there is no <laughs> mic, okay, I suggest right. you shout it out from there. Uh, I'm, I'm really loud, actually. So isn't it bias uh, if we actually speak about women getting bullied because it's, it's not actually women getting bullied and we've been biased not talking about men getting bullied, right? Because first of all, we, we are actually really biased if we actually put women into the front because I'm doing my PhD on men in the tourism sector. So I feel really ba very bad to myself <laughs> if we put women in the front. So that's what it's. Thank you very much. You're totally right, my friend. What's your name? Lisa. Lisa. Okay. So can I, okay, you already gave a big round of applause for her. Please give it to her. You talked about what she said, that was the thought. But for her, I want another round of applause. So she has the, you know, precise question that I asked myself when I was writing the book. That do I really have to make this for women? Yeah, the answer is yes and yes. no. And I got to know that after many men read the book. Once they read the book, they said, Sri, you've written the book targeting to women, but we found so many pearls of wisdom in there. It's not the glass ceiling that we talk about that only women have to face, even men, men of color, men of different ethnicities, men of different places need to face throughout the world. So even though the book is saying, break the glass ceiling and soar, the glass ceiling effect is promoted or advertised, it only happens to women. I don't agree. I totally agree with you on that, that there is a sense. The reason the stories are of women is, I am a girl, yeah, come on, how can I say stories of women? Right, so <laughs> that's the thing. So I just want to conclude here saying that as managers, as leaders, and as people who run other people, we must create a platform for our leaders and give them that launch pad where they can really succeed, flourish, and soar. Thank you very much. Who's feeling empowered? That was too, too soft. Who's feeling empowered? Yes. All right.